Hello and welcome to our first Google Hangout where you can meet some of the outstanding finalist teams of the Open Education Challenge. Today we are with Lex Study and Cubes Coding. Lex Study is an online platform that focuses on legal education, learning, and innovation through video. Students access short peer-to-peer -peer learning videos and university, universities can license video courses to other institutions and individuals and law firms can collaborate with students with online projects. Cubes Coding aims to create a technology ecosystem to help young children and novices learn the programming logic. Uh, the team has built two prototypes, one tangible for children aged 3 to 9 and one graphical for children aged 8 to 14. Both teams will speak about their projects and we'll have some time for discussion at the end. We'll start off with Neil from Lex Study. Uh, can you see my screen, everybody? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, the idea, again, Lex Study is an accredited law course platform. And we're based in Dublin, Ireland. This is our team. Uh, you met myself and Sandeep in, uh, in Barcelona, and there were two other members there, Ruth and Sandeep. And uh, the idea basically came about um, to solve a problem that I'd experienced myself, which was uh, trying to find a, a course that was not available in, um, in, in my college. And I wondered, is it possible to supplement an offline uh, education experience by using online technologies uh, such as, for example, uh, a MOOC? And there are uh, various reasons why uh, people uh, don't have access to uh, subjects and module selection. They, it might be too available, the university could be too small, the uh, lecturing team might not have the expertise, or it may not be subject to, uh, there might, may not be enough demand amongst the student population. So I came, we, we considered when we were developing the idea latent capacity in education, which is the idea of uh, the unmet um, demand of students that wish to access courses not to replace but to supplement their offline their real uh, um, educational experience that they get in the university and that's where the idea uh, of Lex study was born specifically for the uh, the law uh, sector uh, okay so um, this uh, page here is the business model, model canvas and um, it, it gives you an outline of where the initial idea um, I came from the, on the left hand side the, the problems that we were trying to solve and on the to just to the uh, to the left it, it, the solution box there was uh, the was the solution um, that we're trying to provide at the moment which is to provide accredited uh, based on the European ECTS system online courses um, and we want to get those produced by higher level uh, uh, educational institutions or universities to supply to at middle and lower tiers. But the uh, screenshot gives you an idea of um, uh, basic models, uh, uh, modules in um, uh, law subjects, uh, introduction, uh, introductory uh, subjects that will allow uh, students to get um, an understanding um, for uh, courses um, that will um, eventually um, they'll be able to use as um, uh, accredited modules and transfer, for example, if they wanted to do a, a master's uh, uh, qualification online. The benefits of uh, this platform is it provides added choices uh, for the students, obviously, for their selection of, of courses, but also for the university that they are currently enrolled in because um, an online solution is not just a solution for the students, but it, it can uh, increase or retain the numbers of students in a university um, that does not provide uh, the solution because the students can use uh, Lex Study to complement the existing educational uh, university, uh, university experience. It's also promotion for the course provider. Obviously, um, the bigger universities have a lot to gain, and in that regard, uh, Coursera and um, edX are, are um, online platforms that have been developed by the biggest universities in, in the world, at Harvard and MIT. Um, and obviously you've got accreditation for the students, uh, value for the recipient university, um, uh, as I explained. Um, and the overall ecosystem is enhanced because essentially what an online um, platform provides is a solution for um, 
uh, offline problems where uh, universities get to um, collaborate with uh, their resources and um, everybody benefits, the students, the recipient uni university in retaining the students and the, um, and the university that provides the course. Just in terms of the competition, obviously these are all big names, we would see ourselves down in the bottom right hand corner uh, and adding to the European uh, education um, industry online. And there are obviously um, not so many big players in Europe. Um, there is one called Allison based in, in uh, Ireland, but all the big players are in the EU, United States. So we believe we've got a product and a market. Um, we believe we ha we certainly believe that there's a problem there that needs a solution, and we are trying to turn that problem solution into a product and a market, and that's where we're at at the moment. And we hope to be, um, if uh, things go well, the leading online law platform for American and European students in the next well, three, four, five, maybe six years. Great, thank you. So. We have a couple of minutes for just some conversation, so question and answer. Um, so uh, maybe I'll start off. Um, can you tell us a bit about your team? Okay, so um, I guess I, I was team lead. I came up with the idea and I'm effectively involved in uh, operations of the uh, management side of it and, uh, and uh, I mean I end up it ended up doing a lot of the initial market research to test the viability. Um, uh, Scientist then would be more uh, the technical expert, and uh, he's got um, experience in terms of leading with um, uh, teams out. And uh, he was involved in the startup in, in Silicon Valley, and we 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 were really impressed on the importance of having um, um, a good uh, technical background, especially when um, you're starting. Uh, at a very, uh, with, with such a small number, it's important that you understand the technology, technological uh, side to um, the solution you're trying to provide um, in terms of the system's architecture um, and how to scale it and the, the kind of skill set that's required. Um, and then there are two other people, uh, Ruth Carney, uh, who's involved um, in the, well, in it, it sales uh, at a later stage. But um, to be honest with you, uh, at the early stages, uh, the team is multidisciplinary because we have to do things that we're not um, necessarily expertise on. So everybody gets involved in, for example, the content, the strategy, uh, the marketing, um, and the um, initial market research. Thanks, Neil. Is, is it, can you tell me a bit more about your motivation for the project, and you know, is your interest more? about building a great website or is it more about expanding the education system or are you particularly interested in law like what is sort of your motivation behind this project well it it on a personal level it just stems from trying to provide a solution and that is to provide um, um, a an alternative to students who have I, I keep going back to the phrase of limited capacity to provide um, alternative online solutions to students who are are engaged in an offline um, uh, a, a law um, education. Um, and um, what motivates me is that I believe that um, online technologies can supplement um, offline uh, educational experience. And uh, uh, I believe that um, the um, we have the components to create this solution. So I'm motivated by, by trying to uh, succeed in the execution of this problem and this solution. Let's uh, go back to Cubes Coding. Teo, can you tell us about your team? Who are the members of your team and what are your roles? Uh, so, <laughs> uh, we are actually three. Uh, me, Anastasius, and Danai. Uh, uh, the, the interesting thing with uh, our team is that we are not living in the same place. Uh, I live in the Saloniki, Greece, and Anastasius and Danai live in Finland. So the, uh, the company is going to be established in Finland. For this reason, Anastasius is the one who is going to run 
the difficult thing uh, with business. Uh, I, I was the one who had the idea about uh, uh, creating a system with cubes and Anastasius was the guy who proposed to start something in Finland. Uh, and of course he had uh, the reasons for this uh, proposal because uh, Finland appears to be a very good place for business, for education, for, um, for, for everything innovative. Uh, Vanai is the one who is uh, most uh, focusing on the business part. She has a master in business. So uh, I'm the one who is, let's say, something more uh, scientific oriented. Anastasius is the one who is uh, the businessman and uh, Danai is uh, the one behind Asos who is helping, who is, uh, uh, she is helping him to, to do the difficult things. Okay. Um... I was wondering, could you show us again the like the materials that you use? Like, why are these the best shapes and forms, or like, why is this the best way to teach children programming? So uh, let's change position now. So uh, these are the cubes. Uh, they are actually cubes. Uh, the size actually was a a little bit bigger than uh, than the thing that we uh, we realize now, because we, I, in Italy I didn't know uh, what is the target group for this uh, system, so I created a little bit uh, bigger cubes, because I thought that this system can be used for uh, children at the age of let's say uh, ten years old. Uh, after a lot of research, I found out that this, uh, this thing can be used for, uh, let's say, children at the age of, of four, or for three and a half, or something like that. So, uh, in Italy, uh, it was built up upon a, an idea that is going to be used for older children, and then the research leads us to to focus on younger children. About the robot, this is it. It's a classical uh, Lego robot, uh, which uh, is made by uh, Lego. Uh, it's available in, in almost uh, every school in Finland and many schools in Greece, of course. So it's a common robot that somebody can build. Uh, the schools already have it. Uh, what they don't have is a new way to program the, this robot. Um, we propose uh, these cubes. Uh, I didn't say that uh, in each cube there is a microcontroller, so actually these are smart cubes. Each cube is a unique that uh, works alone in, uh, in, uh, in, let's say, collaboration with his neighboring uh, cubes and it has its own wheel, let's say. Uh, uh, the reason for uh, make it so, let's say, sophisticated or high-tech, it was that uh, we wanted to create a system that is full expansible, so somebody can buy, let's say, can take 10 cubes, and the next year can take other 20 cubes, after one year, other 50 cubes, I don't know. So the system is fully expansible. Uh, the children can have interaction on the interface, on the cubes. For instance, here they can know uh, if they make a check, if this check was true or false. They can have feedback in real time. So uh, for this reason, we decided to make these cubes smart and not just uh, wooden cubes. Cool. Okay. Um, does anyone else have some questions that they would like to ask? Neil, I am waiting a difficult question for you. From you. 
You want a difficult question from me? Yeah. Okay, right. Well, what about your cost of production? And um, do you think that do you think that it might be very, very expensive to introduce into the education system? Because I know uh, you said Finland is a good place to introduce this because, um, in relative terms, the Finnish the Finnish education system has a good budget for um, for um, for toys, but in uh, I don't know about Greece, but in Spain and in Italy and and in Ireland we have you know recession. Who's going to buy this? Okay, that was really a tough question that made Tassos to laugh. <laughs> so my friend, I have the answer. In the prototype, this cube cost me something like ten euros per cube. Only the cube, not the things that are, in, are inside. Yeah. What I have found now, uh, tell me how is the, how, what is the cost of the new cubes that I have found? Can you imagine? Are you getting them from China? No, from Greece. A plastic cube from Greece? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe less than five euros. So, the first one was 10 euros, the, the rest it will be something like 10 cents. Ah, okay. Can you imagine the difference? <laughs> that's, so, that's okay. let's go more, let's talk about uh, more things. Uh, about the uh, PCBs, microcontrollers and things like that. They, uh, all these things are reduced by the amount of uh, things that you are going to buy. Yeah. This means that I, I strongly believe if only the materials and the work for somebody to build this thing may cost at the, let's say, something like mm, 5 euros each cube, complete. Anastasios, do you want to add anything? No, oh, I agree. It's the toughest question that we have to answer. We need to make a lot of research about the cost and about how much we will sell to the market. Uh, but uh, we're working on this. Theodos is working tough and uh, together with Open Education also and all the vendors we have, we're trying to find the best solution about uh, uh, industrial design, about industrial production and about yeah. the cost. Yeah, very good. I think another thing, another observation um, I'd like to make is that you should also ob obviously be considering the other stakeholder, which are the parents of the children, um, and uh, there is potentially a market there um, for uh, cubes coding, not not for the schools, but for example the Christmas market for um, uh, typically in in I know in I don't know if it's the same in Greece, but in in Western uh, Europe the biggest uh, um, commercial uh, activity for for toys for children is at Christmas time, um, and so if you're going to commercialize it for schools, you should also you should also consider commercializing it for um, for the the toys market, the you know the shop retail toys market outside of school. Yeah, we totally totally agree with your, observa your observation. Uh, we had some open events in Finland and also in Greece now. Theodosis was in the Google Developers Playground in Thessaloniki. So actually we're getting um, feedback about the parents. And the first they are asking is where we can buy this and uh, how we can buy this except the schools. And uh, we're asking them, okay, if, my, if it will be, you think, expensive at this price, and the most common answer it is, as you say, okay, might is a bit expensive if we'll buy the full package, but for Christmas gift, I think is an excellent choice. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'll close the call now. Thanks so much, guys. If anything, uh, you know, just feel free to email or Skype. It, it was great to see you Thank both. You very much, Thank you very much. Okay, take care. Bye.